Uh, we have um, Emilio, who is my little brother, is going to do a little demo of um, Tractor. Uh, used it. Okay, one, two people, three people. Right on. Okay. So, um, yeah, obviously it's you know it's very versatile in the sense that you know there's a lot of different functions and a lot of different things that you can do. Part of the reason that I really like Tractor is the way that they have their loops and their jumping laid out. So the way that I generally uh, play, you know, if I'm out on a club or something like that, is I have two MIDI controllers that I use. This is a Zone 1D, okay, and then by Allen and Heat, and then this is a Zone 2D. Now, they both are the same, essentially, in their layout and their uh, MIDI functionality. The difference is, is that this one has an integrated sound card. Uh, and so what I do is I will output uh, on two channels, up to four channels, from the sound card into uh, a house mixer or whatever mixer they have at the club. Um, now, the thing that I like about these controllers is obviously uh, the layout, of course. Uh, but these are actually discontinued. The reason I still use them is they're made like tanks. So they can be, I definitely drop them down some stairs and you know all that kind of stuff. But they're still good. There is a newer version. This is the newer version. So this is the Zone K2. Uh, you'll notice that one of the big differences is that it does not have a jog wheel anymore. And part of the reason for that is that Tractor now uh, is so flexible in allowing you to set up your grids, which are essentially these little ticks that are along each of the beats. Uh, and so with this, you can have, uh, first of all, the sync function, which will match the two tracks. Everything's shipping. Okay, let's just make sure that my sound card is selected. Yes, there we go. Okay. Tier 1, and tier 1, and 4. Okay. So, basic example of a sync function is if we are to just press play on this track, you'll notice that the BPMs are different. This one uh, that is playing now is set to 122.88, whereas the one on the right is set to 125. So, naturally, if we bring them in, this one's not getting a is what permits you to uh, to rid the jog wheel on, on this controller. Now the other thing that you can do with this controller uh, is you'll be able to set your pitch bend uh, controls so that you can increase or decrease the tempo depending on how much you need to speed up or slow down. So if you're finding that you're, uh, you know, that you're needing to make small adjustments like you would on a jog wheel, you can dedicate uh, buttons to that. Uh, so yeah, I mean this is just an overall, so this is the new version of that. Is now, it like a nudge function? Yeah, like yeah. a yeah, pitch bend nudge, I think. And uh, so we can talk a little bit about MIDI mapping. I mean that's obviously a very essential component to using a, a program like Tractor because uh, you need to decide what buttons, what knobs you want to perform which functions in the software. So the way that MIDI mapping works in Tractor is you have a controller manager here. And in the controller manager, you will have uh, the add-in button with a list of your different functions that you can assign to the, uh, to the control that you, uh, that you want. So in this case, uh, if we take a look at the, uh, the uh, jog scratch tempo function here, Okay. That is going to be assigned to the jog wheel. So we move that and it does the jog scratch function. Uh, so, uh, where was I going with this? Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, 
Yeah, but I mean, it can be it can be like any other function that you might want, Mapping right? Like if we so. want like I effects, think and things like really that. That's really the thing about Tractor that people like. Uh, I mean, I, you find DJs divided on what software they like. Um, Prussian and I prefer Serato. Emilio likes Tractor. I, I think one of the reasons is because it's powerful MIDI mapping. You can literally map any function to any button and customize your layout exactly how you want. Right. So let's uh, let's map a control here. So let's let's give uh, let's do a pitch bend uh, function. So in this for pitch bend, we are going to want to select tempo and then uh, the tempo fader. Okay, so the tempo fader is this control right here, which will increase and decrease this tempo. Okay, and let's say we want to map it to one of the faders on here. Okay, what we would do is we would click uh, learn, okay, making sure that the tempo fader function is highlighted, and then you move the control that you want. And you see how it's just been added in right there? So now if we take learn off and we look at that tempo fader again, you will see that it moves as I move the function. Now this, of course this code here, exactly the same language as what's being sent out of a piano yeah, if we're for, doing for this Ableton. is MIDI information that we were talking about earlier. Really it's the same about. code, that's why they they all talk to each other, because you're using the same same parameters, right. same language. And exactly. it's really the same the same thing with Ableton. Right? Like you can map you these could, controllers can be used for Ableton, Ableton, as well. Ableton yeah, exactly. which you could also map any control to yeah. any function. Those that you effects want. that we were talking about, same. Yeah. Same. Now that being said, for people that want, um, you know, want something quick and easy, there are already a lot of mappings for these devices. So, so if you, you have a piece of gear and you want to use it with tractor. Like you have an Allen heat controller, you plug it in, it'll probably work. Google it. There's yeah. <laughs> problem. There's right. Bunch there of is people have made mappings and uh, right. a good place to start from where you can then modify it to your liking. Right. So uh, there's a certain file type that is associated with uh, a preset MIDI mapping, uh, and that's called a TSI file. Uh, so the way that you open a TSI file, let's say you don't want to spend all the time, you know, mapping out the individual controls. Uh, you would actually just hit uh, add and then import and then you would just let's see if we've got a TSI file on the desktop here I wonder. there it is right so a TSI so basically what will happen is if we were to hit open here it would have a list of commands that are already assigned to you know whatever buttons and stuff that the person had determined in the first place so that's a, a fast way to sort of get your mappings in I mean there's lots of different ones so you gotta like just research a little bit and, and kind of maybe find something that you think is gonna work well for you and, and what you want your controllers to do. Um, now the other things, uh, I mean, uh, the, I guess a big component of it too is, is your, your output routing and your sound card. So uh, when you use Tractor, you can use it standalone, just using the internal sound card and we could output out of our headphone jack into a channel on the mixer, right? And what that's going to restrict you to do, uh, to though, is, is you have to use your mouse to control all of your stuff, right? Um, uh, well, actually, no, that's not true. You could still use the um, the uh, controllers, but uh, I mean, you're not like your you're, not, you're not getting any audio out of it. So you're yeah, not if your audio is coming out of your headphone output, um, it's going to limit you. Generally, when you DJ, you want to have two sets of outputs so you can cue what's coming up and not have it everyone else listen to what's in right. your headphone before bringing it in uh, for the rest of the people to hear. Right, right. Now, um, so, but in this case, because we have our, our sound card here, uh, we have the sound card populated in the audio device uh, section of the uh, preferences. So uh, the other thing too, is you'll see here, there's a latency function. So latency, um, how many of you guys are familiar with latency? Do you guys know what it is? Yeah, yeah. So to adjust your latency, typically speaking, a, a natural feel is usually in and around the 10 millisecond mark, right? Anything more than that, and you'll kind of start to feel the delay. Uh, and anything less than that, and okay. it, yeah. it might, you know, bog down your CPU, and you might get some some glitched audio glitches and things like that. Um, so now, if we take a look at the output routing. Uh, this uh, sound card here has uh, four outs uh, and two ins, and it's got 
it's funny, it's got this uh, optical thing, but I don't even know like where you would use that. No mixer has an optical input like that. I mean, like home, some of the home theaters have optical in. Right, like, right. So if you want to DJ at home on your TV, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the optical on uh, that kind of gear is completely different from uh, uh, consumer, like if oh. you have a Yamaha amp, yeah, oh, really? those aren't going to speak the same language. Oh, really? You may as well be speaking uh, Swahili. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, that is actually meant for like production gear. Production, it's just, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just not mixers that would necessarily be found here right. because it's right. It's, but it something would be next level. Right. Yeah. Totally. You okay. Learn something every day. That's good. No. That's, thanks for clarifying that. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. So if we take a look at our output routing here, uh, what I have assigned is channels uh, one and two, and three and four going to channels. Uh, one and four of the mixer. Yeah. Okay. This mixer that he's plugging into could very well just be this one at the club. Yeah. We just happen to be going into my mixer, then into this one, but normally he might just send this one to house. To, to if house him and I were DJing at a festival, there's eight people there, and we know six DJs are going to use this gear. Yeah, he he'll plug, plug in. into these right. two channels. So that when he plays, he uses channel one and four, and you know you switch right. over. Exactly. But they might, it might as well be this this mixer instead of that one. So either way. Right, so you can uh, obviously change the outputs. So you see here, there's actually ten uh, outs here. Uh, typically, I only mix with uh, with two decks. Sometimes I'll mix with four and stuff. Uh, so if we wanted to add, you know, a, a third and a fourth deck here, uh, the way that we would do that would be under decks, and then you select enable C and D. Okay, so now you see how it's got the other two decks populated at the bottom, but. Uh, what we need to adjust because right now those are not assigned to any outputs so we would need to assign those to channels uh, you know five six seven and eight in order to get the audio from the sound card into the mixer and correspondingly input onto the channels on here uh, but we're not going to worry about that at this point because I don't even have enough RCAs for that so <laughs> um, let's see here now this is uh, inputs so uh, the input uh, routing here uh, the way that it works is, uh, yeah, you simply will have, let's say if I wanted to record a mix, for example, let's say I wanted to record my set at the club, uh, because this has inputs, uh, you can just go from, you know, a recording output on a mixer or, or a master output or whatever you want, uh, and you go into here, uh, and then you just select the channels that, uh, that you want the recording to, to go into on the sound card. So in this case, uh, we have input deck A, so that's uh, one and two, right? Just like we were programming the guitar and the piano, right? At the beginning, Sim same same principles. Same principles, right? Exactly. Uh, but then what we want to change is we want to go down to mix recorder here, and then you need to select deck A as your input. So now if we take a look here and we play this track once again, okay, and we've got our uh, we've got our audio coming through. some form of backup even Absolutely. if it's just like an iPod with some tunes on it and a eighth inch cable um, yeah. that's why you might want to have a second mixer if your controller is powered by your computer your computer stops your controller stops the music stops you forget your power cord yeah 
So, yeah. so you should plug in, uh, have something ready. Uh, some people will just bring a CD player. Some people have an iPod. But anything is better than the embarrassment you'll have of, you know, five minutes of dead air while your computer reboots and people start booing. And Here with, on the tangent that we were on. So now that we've got it hooked up, so we've got our, our track playing. Totally. Okay, yeah, good, so good call. So maybe do like a little mix to kind of give an example sure. of some of the things you can do with uh, loops and yeah. sure, sure. So the tracks. Yeah, so generally the way that it'll play is, is it will have like different effects and stuff like that. Uh, like usually two effects processors with my right deck assigned to the effects processor on the top right and the left deck uh, assigned to the left uh, effects processor. Um, and then I've got various functions here. Uh, I really like my delays, so I like to, you know, bring things in, take things out, and have that kind of echoey sort of effect. I find it's really good for creating suspense. So I'll give you guys an example of that. If we're to do that in the mix here. is that uh, the, uh, the length of the loop that you have selected, that is the amount of, uh, like the amount of beats that you will jump depending forward or backwards, whatever you want. So here, if we want to just jump back 16, you just jump back 16 and so forth, jump forward 32. Um, now there's a lot of other effects and things like that that we can use, but uh, I, I really like the delay. It's my, it's my main go-to because I find it's probably one of the most versatile effects. Uh, what else do we have here? So let's take a look at some other ones. Uh, there's a reverb, good old reverb. Probably one of the most commonly used effects in production. Uh, any, any producer is uh, it's probably one of the main sort of tools. So the way that'll sound. See, it kind of makes it sound like a ball kind of thing, sort of like kind of ball. And then there's that freeze function again, so it'll just take.
we'll need this uh, dry wet uh, in order. To, that, that basically is the amount of the effect that is, or the amount of the signal that is being affected uh, by the selected effect. So uh, something like a delay uh, is going to have uh, the original signal, like the original song, as well as the effect, and that's what gives you that like stagger because you're getting both signals, not just the one. Whereas something like this, like the filter, uh, it's it's different in the sense that you don't need the second signal as well as much, right? So you will be in a position where what is being affected is is the uh, yeah, I mean, is the track in its entirety, but uh, you want the dry wet to be full because you want as much of the uh, of the filtering effect as possible, right? So that's just a band pass filter. Very brief. Originally, we were planning on, on doing some stuff with the uh, push, but obviously there were a few complications with that. So. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of gear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> USB USB driven gear requires at least a day setup to make sure that all the signals are sent. You know, like you know, USB instruments and machines are great because you can plug them in and play. But if you have a machine and a DJ and then a MIDI controlled piano, you want to make sure that you know you set them up the day before. We didn't really get a chance to do that today. Um, but it, hopefully, you know, some things stuck today. We saw a little bit of use of MIDI keyboard, we saw a little bit of use of audio, recording audio, how to make clips, trim them, save them, EQ them, compress them, loop them, and we almost even got into turning your loops into a song by using the launch mode. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to do another one of these somewhere down the line.